Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. Today we are going to work on our penultimate song for the week of Jazz Fusion. Um, this one is a bit lower voted in the polls, which usually means that it's a smaller group, uh, although sometimes it has meant that the song just did not fit the theme, and I guess that can happen sometimes, but hopefully... I'm kind of banking on this just being a really good jazz fusion, jazz rock group uh, that just is lesser known. And I like to promote smaller bands on the channel. So let's get into this one. The band is Do Make Say Think. The song is Frederica. Frederica. Hmm, I don't know how you say that one. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into this. Let's see what's up. We got a real spooky uh, album art here. So... Certainly very unsettling so far. Very cool rhythmic work between the three strings instruments though. The way that they're uh, sort of playing around with different ideas. The drums do a lot of heavy lifting here and keeping the rhythm because the strings are still doing what they were doing and uh, it is very difficult to figure out what is going on in the time with those. They're all really doing their own thing over there.
drumming work is phenomenal. Um, really good at laying down the rhythm like a metronome, but also throwing in some really cool embellishments, especially with their hi-hat work. This whole song though, there's always some creeping unsettlingness just hanging around the bottom. Okay, so that was pretty cool. Lots of real human things going on in this one, uh, performance-wise. A lot of the way notes are strummed, uh, the way that two instruments are played with each other. Uh, sometimes we get some things that have wildly different attacks to them. We have two instruments that are playing just slightly out of time. Maybe they're supposed to both land on a note at the same time. It's just a, you know, a hair late. Very human element. And once again, right as I'm about to say, you know, they're starting to cheer up a little bit. We got some brightness. There's that creeping underneath, man. Ambient speaking? bass brought back its uh, rhythm its pattern from a while ago.
really like that drum uh, pattern rhythmically, uh, how it ties into uh, a little bit of what the piano was doing there. Is, is that the track though? Yup. All right, so. Hmm. Obviously, that was not jazz fusion or even jazz rock. <clears throat> I'd say that uh, my best guess would probably be post-rock. So. Let's get into this analysis bit. Um, so the song, it really has three parts to it, right? Uh, we have our opening part before we get into the huge, uh, the huge section. We have that huge section, I guess before. Then we have the small section that builds again, and then another drop. And that is what this whole song does. In fact, if we look at it at rises and drops, there's really, we go back to my three section uh, idea where we have our first section starts out quiet at the beginning rises drops here's where the second section starts it rises and then drops and then that takes us out and we have these uh these two distinct uh growing evolving sections and then a final outro <clears throat> and uh i'd say that as far as post music goes i kind of enjoyed what was going on here we saw a lot of similar ideas being utilized and reutilized, recontextualized, varied upon. We saw variations of them. Uh, we saw uh, them come back straight, but with embellishment from maybe other instruments. Um, and there's a lot of this idea of revisiting theme, uh, or at least, uh, yeah, revisiting themes, uh, even though they're just instrumental themes. Um, and kind of seeing how they work within new contexts. I really dig that. I think they did a really good job of also adding layers. Uh, it did take them a while. Those of you who know me have been around for a while. This type of music is not my favorite. Uh, like I said, we really have, <laughs> we have three core ideas and we slowly, very slowly get to see them uh, go from their most sparses to their most layered. And uh, I completely understand and appreciate the idea of really dragging us out. Those huge, those two huge, gritty, compressed moments would not have the impact if they were, uh, you know, a minute and a half out of a four minute song rather than a minute and a half out of a 10 minute song. It changes their ratio to the rest of the music so that when they come by, they have more punch. I get, I get it. <laughs> I really do. But on a casual listening, I just, it's a really good payoff, but I usually can't get there. <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, it is just uh, a lot of, a lot of nothing going on before the what I would say is the interesting part um but I also understand you can't have the interesting part without the a lot of nothing going on uh with that said though I do enjoy how they went about their layering I think it was clever and they utilized a lot of different ideas that weren't just let's add another instrument and we'll see how they can fit in it was more of uh, you know, what's going on in other instruments. Let's look at sections that can be embellished upon. Let's look at ways that we could create some duet ideas. Um, let's look at ways that we can disrupt time. I think that was a big one. We started out with that idea right there with the three strings at the beginning. I mentioned that before the drums came in, it was very difficult. I mean, if you honed in on, I think it was the violin, uh, the core violin, 
um, it had a nice 4-4 tempo to it. The other two instruments were sort of out there and they had more space between some of their ideas so it was a little harder to find the the loop the repetition but the core violin that i would say uh had i think it was alternating just keep playing uh just they kept playing eighth notes no rest or breaks and they were emphasizing the what would be on the beat notes for them um and now they really provided a bit of a, a direction but if you took all three instruments together, it's very difficult to find a pulse to the whole thing. And the drums came in and really cemented that down. But from the beginning, time was not really a concept that the band seemed to care about. And I like how they continue to play around with that throughout the song and really incorporating different sorts of accents and uh, different uh, rhythmic structures that changed the way that the time felt depending on what instrument you were listening to. Um, so they found some, they found some ways to layer in new ideas that personally kept me interested. Maybe this type of uh, layered uh, slow burn writing didn't work for you, uh, and that's fine. There's plenty, <laughs> as I'm finding out, plenty of this type of music out there. Um, I I think it's pretty cool that I found one that kind of worked for me on the layering. Um, each new layer was like a new piece of a puzzle, and I really enjoyed that. It wasn't just something else to add to the sound. They were really finding ways to work it into the overall um, picture rather than just the overall tone or the overall atmosphere, and really looking at some of the um, melodic and rhythmic ways to incorporate it rather than just what the texture of the atmosphere sounded like with this new element. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Uh, and then, of course, those two really big moments, like I said, they are sort of the set pieces. Uh, they're, they're, they're the big moments. And uh, to me, they're the, they're the two coolest sections, I guess you could say, the, the most prominent in my mind. But as I mentioned, they don't do that on their own. A lot of the heavy lifting comes from the slow burn prior to it. So even though I say that those are the two most memorable, I am not discounting what comes before them. I completely understand that the, the, that's necessary to make the large moments have that impact uh, on me. Um, as for like theme and atmosphere, I have a really hard time really pegging down what uh, they're going for here, which is unusual. Usually I can tap into some of the emotive ideas that are going on in the atmosphere, and uh, I've really got nothing. There's this beautiful overtone that kind of permeates the whole song but every single time it begins to shine through this darkness also comes up from underneath and uh i don't know that's 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 pretty much as far as i go with that one there's there's beauty and darkness and they're always present together and they're both hiding under the surface i don't I don't really have much of a, a cohesive idea of how that works into a theme. But uh, it is interesting how they continue to make most of the song feel rather neutral. And then they allow these two elements to pop up in strength from time to time, but never usually too far from one another. They have their beautiful melody lines, they have the instruments that play them, when those instruments come in with the beautiful lines, it's usually not too long behind that we start to hear the lower end come in with some of their uh, more menacing lines as well. So, like I said, it's a really cool idea. I just don't, uh, I'm not seeing the overall theme or maybe a narrative story for it that uh, kind of ties that idea together for me. But I've only listened to it once. That's kind of how these reactions go. I'm not saying it isn't there. I just didn't see it in my first listen. Uh, I have to address the elephant in the room, though. Again, this is not jazz fusion, and that is a bit of uh, a little bit of a disappointment. But I also we also listened to um, what did we check out on Saturday? Oh, no, you know, I think it was Friday. Go-Go uh, Penguin. And uh, I mentioned that it was like 
post rock meets jazz and I was kind of wondering if there was any sort of ties between that and I saw some comments that said no that there's not really much history that kind of ties those two genres together but I think it is interesting that we have another band here that is uh, utilizing a very post sort of composition technique uh, while also incorporating some trumpets and trombones at least um, and because post seems to kind of go against and buck traditional composition styles, uh, I thought it was interesting that they also decided to buck traditional playing technique. The trumpets had this very strong warble. <clears throat> and when it came in, I really tried to imagine how they obtained that. They could have used uh, a special kind of mute. I don't know if there's a mute that would specifically give them that tone, but uh, I guess it could happen. Um, a Harmon mute would have been very close, but Harmons have a much faster warble to them, almost uh, a sort of distortion. And uh, as the name implies, it also mutes it quite a bit. That sounded like a full trumpet sound. Uh, so the next thing I went to was like a, a tongue trill, like like trilling the tongue while playing. And uh, I might have to grab a mouthpiece or maybe a whole trumpet and just see if I could do that. Uh, because it's, um, yeah, it, it doesn't sound too hard, but at the same time, I'm trying to think of like keeping the embouchure, strong uh, air support, and then also worrying about chilling the tongue because that's going to mess with the uh, air support. It's going to change how the air flows through the mouth because you have a constantly moving wall that's changing its shape. Uh, and then just how the muscles of doing the roll are going to influence the embouchure muscles. And uh, yeah, I think it's possible. <laughs> um, but then they also had like this real hard grit in there too, almost like they were adding some sort of compress. And I, I just, I don't know. I'm really curious about that uh, trumpet technique um, or the trombone. I don't, I don't, it was, it was a bit in the background to begin with. And then it had this strange warble on it as well. So uh, it, it could have been a trumpet or a trombone. It was about in the range that either one of them could have hit. But yeah, I'm, I'm a little intrigued about that. And I, I might have to do some testing uh, sometime soon maybe this weekend and, and see what I can come up with uh, but those are my thoughts on do make say think I am interested in them even if they were not necessarily what I was expecting for today uh, this is where you guys come in though hit me up with some comments that you got what are you thinking about uh, did you enjoy it did you not is there anything in there that uh, you know maybe stuck out to you maybe you have some ideas about the overall theme I would love to hear that like I said, I kind of I kind of see some of the core ideas popping out. I just don't see anything to really tie it together into, uh, like I said, a sort of narrative idea. The description box is above the comment section, and there are some links adjacent to the channel. Maybe you'd like to uh, support the channel through Patreon or join the Discord community. Like I said, you can find the links there. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. All three of those things help out the channel immensely. I will be back tomorrow for our final episode of Jazz Fusion slash Jazz Rock Week. And uh, looking forward to it. We've had an interesting ride this week. Uh, kind of seeing both sides of the coin of this. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of wondering how this week's going to end. I hope we can revisit this and possibly lean a little bit into the earlier... Uh, jazz fusion style stuff rather than the later uh, songs where or the later style where rock bands began to take jazz inspiration so yeah there's that anyways like I said I'll be back tomorrow 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time until next time remember to be critical not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning afternoon or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos Thank you.